Welcome everybody into another edition of Friday Night Lights as Anahuac Sports Live presents the Buna Cougars taking on the Anahuac Panthers. Hello everybody, Alex Altrum, Trent Hart here from Buna, Texas as uh, here at Cougar Stadium where the Panthers coming off of a bye look to get back on the winning track and come into district play. Uh, only their second game on the road here in district play. But uh, really, after the loss to the East Chambers Buccaneers, uh, an important game here in district play. Well, absolutely an important game. I mean, the Buna Cougars always play Anahuac very, very tight year in and year out. Um, and the, tonight, I expect it to be no different. Uh, coming off the bye week and the, the tough loss to East Chambers uh, two weeks ago, uh, I'm sure that the Anahuac Panthers and Coach Greg Neese are looking to get uh, back on track and, and look towards uh, the playoffs. But first, they got to take care of the Cougars here tonight. And with you know only three weeks counting tonight left in district play, uh, they really got to take care of business here and the remaining two games. Absolutely. They, uh, the Buna Cougars uh, – Coming off really a hard-fought loss at East Chambers in Winnie where they put up 28 points against the Buccaneers and gave up 37, so ended up losing by nine points. But probably a much closer game than what was thought to be at the very beginning of that ball game. Well, it was a much closer ball game. I was watching, uh, you know, not watching it, but I was watching the score updates uh, on my phone, and I was very surprised that the Buna Cougars were able to uh, hold with the, the Buccaneers as well as they did. And um, like I said, they play Anahuac tight every single year. They're probably going to do so here tonight. Um, you know, the Cougars are sitting right now in that fourth place spot, and, you know, they're going to look to try and win out and make it into the playoffs as well. Yeah, the Cougars uh, being led by sophomore running back Jacob Johnson. 80 carries, 701 yards on the on the year. Uh, an average of 8.8 .8 per carry for a sophomore. My goodness, 10 touchdowns. Really something head coach Greg Neese and the defense is going to have to key in on tonight. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, what can you say about a sophomore running back? I mean, he, you, you just talked about the stats. I mean, you you got to be keying in on him and making sure that you can contain him. But they also got a good quarterback, Alex, and, and that quarterback is going to have to uh, do some things and make some things happen if he wants to get over on this Panther defense. And the Panther defense is going to have to really focus on, you know, just getting penetration up front. I mean, it starts with that defensive line, and they're going to have to, uh, you know, Dalton Hendricks up there is going to have to get into the backfield get some sacks, uh, possibly make some big defensive plays, get some turnovers, and the Panthers will see success here tonight. Speaking of that uh, quarterback, senior quarterback, uh, Dylan Graffanino, the uh, the senior coming in, and really two senior-laden uh, wide receivers as uh, Logan Moss and Kyler Stark, uh, both with some uh, pretty good numbers from the wide receiver spot. First for Graffanino, uh, he is – he's got 100 and uh, – 120 attempts. He's 47 of 120. He's got 794 yards through the air. He's got eight touchdowns, has also given up 11 interceptions. So the secondary for the Panthers tonight going to have to be keyed in on that. Like we said, the two senior wide receivers, Moss and Stark. Uh, for Moss, 18 receptions, 409 yards, and uh, six touchdowns. Uh, Moss is averaging 22.7 yards per reception. Stark, 22 receptions, 309 yards, uh, is going to have to, uh, uh, they, like we said, the secondary is going to have to shut those two seniors down and uh, and aim on the run, aim in on the run game. Uh, we know that the Cougar defense is a little bit vulnerable, and that could be some good news for sophomore quarterback of the uh, Panthers, Marcus Curiel. Marcus is uh, uh, 41 of 69. 583 yards through the air this year. He's got seven touchdowns. He's done a pretty good job of not turning the ball over. He does have three interceptions. As for uh, uh, for where those passes are going, Zion Clark has uh, 122 yards. I'm sorry, 190, uh, 190 yards on 10 catches. So he's averaging 19 yards per catch on three touchdowns. And, of course, uh, the Panthers have that double-headed 
running back with uh, Landon Corbett and Christian Sanchez. Landon, 85, uh, 86 rushes, 714 yards, 16 touchdowns uh, for Landon Corbett. As for Christian, Christian has uh, 89 rushes, 606 yards, three touchdowns, not to mention everything that he does in the uh, special teams game, handling the kickoffs, handling the field goals. So it should be a fun one. Uh, you know, these two teams look to match up really, really well. And uh, we've got to see how this Panther defense comes out tonight, if uh, they can come back and bounce back in a big way. Well, I, I would have liked to get a little insight from Coach Nees and what they did on the bye week. And, you know, after coming off of the Buccaneers game, I'm sure that they, you know, went back to the tape, really studied it hard to figure out uh, what defensively they could have done better in that football game uh, to better contain the Buccaneers. And I'm sure that they, you know, worked really hard over this last week to try and improve the defensive situation. And we're going to definitely see it here tonight. Uh, and you're right, Alex, it's, you're going to, you know, it's going to, it's going to come down to that. It's going to see which, which Anahuac Panther defense shows up here tonight. And uh, as long as they come out fired up, wanting to, you know, get to that quarterback and contain the rushing game of the Cougars, then they will see success. Um, you know, and as you mentioned, I mean, the, on the offensive side of the ball for the Panthers, you know, the, what can you say? The, the stat line that jumped off the page to me that what you just talked about was Landon Corbett's, and that was 16 touchdowns on the ground. 16 touchdowns on the ground for a running back at this level is phenomenal. And, uh, you know, but it's a two-headed attack. It's not just a one-man show. Uh, the Panther offense has seen success with both running backs and getting the ball to Zion Clark. Not as many touchdowns for Zion this season. I mean, including a heartbreaking touchdown that got called back, you know, but you know, we, we moving, we're moving on, right? I mean, it, we look past that football game, focus on tonight, and the NY Panthers, I'm sure, are doing just that. Absolutely. So we appreciate you turning, tuning in to the Third Coast Integrated Martial Arts pregame show as we will continue after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Ugh.
Welcome back to Cougar Stadium here, just off the campus of Buna High School, where uh, we are about 10 minutes away from getting things kicked off here and uh, senior night for the Buna Cougars as they did their senior celebrations on the field here in the pregame. And uh, Trent, you know, we kind of touched on it earlier in, when we uh, when we opened up, but you know. I think a big key to tonight's ball game is letting go of that East Chambers game, making sure that you do what you've done all year and come out and uh, and make sure we play some uh, some not necessarily flawless, but the football that the Panthers were playing before the East Chambers game. Well, the Panthers were definitely on a roll, Alex, going into that East Chambers game, and you said it. I mean, you got to let that one go. You've got to focus on what the goal is, and that focus is to get to the by-district game, get past the by-district round, because the Anahuac Panthers have not been past the, the by-district round, I think, since 2008. And it's, uh, you know, it's, it's been a long time coming. Coach Greg Neese has emphasized to these kids and to this program uh, what he expects and what he wants to, to see out of those kids, and they have definitely jumped on board. So riding the ship is, is one thing, but focusing on what you set out to do from the get-go of the first of this season is what's important here tonight and taking care of the Cougars, moving on to next week for Kirbyville, finishing out in Woodville, and getting to that by-district round and taking care of business there. No, absolutely. You have to finish – uh, these next two games very strong to go into what could end up being a very important matchup against Wood Woodville to determine uh, who takes that second place spot out of uh, the district as uh, the Panthers ended up in that three-way tiebreaker taking second spot last year. Right. But uh, as you said on the drive up here, that was actually something I was thinking about was uh, when was the last time the Panthers were able to get by uh, the uh, the by district round the playoffs? And you know nothing would make head coach Greg Nees happier than to take this program to the next step. Um, you know, especially while uh, you have kids like uh, like Zion Clark, who's here as a senior and uh, and trying to really break through. So we appreciate every uh, we appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Know that uh, there's quite a bit going on in Houston tonight, and uh, appreciate y'all tuning in for the coverage as always. Want to thank everybody back in Anahuac, and also want to thank everyone from Buna who is uh, tuning in who couldn't make it out to the ball game tonight. Hope you enjoy our uh, our coverage from this evening. Uh, of course, we want to thank. Third Coast Integrated Martial Arts for sponsoring the pregame show here this evening. Fantastic place to uh, to get down for the kiddos. Well, absolutely. I mean, you got a you know after school program there down there at TCIMA, and it's right there off of Miller Street. Uh, so please go and uh, give them a give them a visit and uh, enroll today to to get in on all of their great programs they got over there. It's not just martial arts; it's discipline, and it's also uh, educational for, for not just kids, but adults as well. Um, wanting to touch base with everybody to let you know that, uh, if you're watching the, the Boston and Houston game, we're definitely going to give you, giving you updates as, uh, as those come in right now, it's middle of the first zero to zero, uh, in Houston. And, uh, as the Panthers come onto the field, getting ready to, uh, run out here as well as the Cougars. And we will have the national anthem here shortly. Absolutely. So, we're going to uh, let these teams both line up in their respective inflatables. <laughs> Once they come out, we will get you to the uh, to the national anthem. Alex, I miss the old paper runout signs that they used to do. Yeah, everything got high tech. <laughs> you had the cheerleaders working on it all all week long. Yeah, the big gigantic poles that they used to put them on. I mean, I miss that. I miss those days. Maybe we can talk the uh, the Panther cheerleaders into doing it for the the last home game next week. You think they will? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I can go have a little uh, conversation with Lauren Hillier down there. Really nice night for football. Just a tad humid this e this evening, as the uh, cold front that had 
move through, came and went. But uh, as you said, Kirbyville next Friday night, senior night for the Panthers. And then uh, following that huge game coming up uh, two weeks from tonight in Woodville. So as always, we'll try to get you some scoring updates from around the uh, around the district and around the area. The Prada Anahuac not able to make it out here tonight as they've got their all important uh, area, area yep. round for marching as uh, they were uh, got their perfect score. Was it? Uh, not last weekend, but the weekend before. Not last Saturday, and they'll be traveling up to Lindale tomorrow, um, and they play at 3 o'clock. Um, Anahuac Sports Live will try to go live. It depends all on if I've got cell phone signal tonight or tomorrow, uh, which we are operating on cell signal tonight, so if there are a little bit of pauses or interruptions, don't worry about it. We will try to come back as quickly as possible. Uh, I also want to let everybody know that we've got a huge – light pole right in the middle right on the 50 yard line in front of us so uh if you're wondering what that big black line is in the middle of the screen when we go to midfield you'll know exactly what that is as both teams have now taken the field we will have the national anthem played by the cougar band here momentarily captains tonight for the uh, panthers include zion clark landon corbett christian sanchez and adam galeas I want to thank Hillary Otto, agent with Texas Farm Bureau, for sponsoring our scoreboard tonight. You can give her a call at 936-402-2164 or, visit, or give her an email at hotto at texfbinsurance.com. Thank you. 
All right, the Buna Cougar Band performing tonight's national anthems as captains from both teams will be meeting at midfield. Captains for the Cougars tonight, so number 11, Tyler Stark, number 16, Tyler Milstead, number 21, Josh Robinson, and number 50, Tavian Schaefer. Captains for the Panthers, number two, Zion Clark, number three. Captains for uh, Buna tonight include Kyler Stark, Tyler Milstead, Josh Robinson. And trying to see the, trying to see the other one. The other one was Jakeby and Shankle, Panthers, we'll all seniors, and the Panthers won the toss and keep their streak of receiving the football first in every single game this year. Is that eight or nine? I can't even. I, I've lost count at this point. That is uh, eight. Eight in a row, a streak. Almost as good as DiMaggio's. <laughs> so we are set here from Cougar Stadium in Buna. T is down. Looking to uh, handle the kicking duty. Toby Mars, the sophomore for the Cougars. So as you can see, we have the uh, Boston and Houston score in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. So no use in going and actually watching that, right, Alex? <laughs> you can just come over here, watch us on Anawag Sports Live, keep track of the baseball game at the same time. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> if there wasn't some sort of FCC violations, we could probably try to get a small snippet of it in the corner. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'll, I'll avoid that for tonight. <laughs> here we go. Zion Clark and KJ Moore back deep. The up bats include Landon Corbett, Christian Sanchez, and Thomas Delo. I apologize, everybody. We don't have the actual clock. Uh, cam tonight because we are on the road on the visiting side here at Cougar Stadium, but we'll constantly give you updates on how much time is left. Uh, next week in Kirbyville, the clock cam will be back. Uh -oh. What was that? Not sure. <laughs> a delay in the game as they're trying to get the <laughs> the confetti off of the side of the field down here. That was uh, blown out whenever the <laughs> Panthers took the field out of their uh, their Panther head. Apparently, the confetti is going to uh, affect the runners. While we're at that, uh, the Cougars in their royal blue uniforms. They've got white helmets, white trousers. They are trimmed out in blue, white numerals. They've got their white helmets with their blue, uh, royal blue cougar emblems on their helmets. As for the Panthers, Panthers in their normal away gear, the black helmets with the gold AP emblem, white jerseys, black trousers outlined with the black numerals. Black letters outlined in gold. Numerals on the back of the helmet in gold as well. I think that's a new addition this week is the numbers on the back of the helmets. Maybe it was on there last week. I just didn't notice with all the excitement. I think it was on there. I think they actually started it last week. It's a good little touch. Panthers looking sharp. 
Well, it looks like they got the confetti moved off the field. They're actually using the blower now to get it off. Uh, so props to the Panther cheerleaders for helping out with that as we get ready to kick things off here in Buna, Texas for week eight of Texas high school football. Or week nine, actually. Confetti Geddon has ended, and we are ready to go. The ball is teed. Mars has it teed up. Pooch kick is going to fall to the 30, 35, 40. He's Down the room. sideline he goes. Landon makes a cutback. He's going to take it to the house. 70-yard kickoff return for a touchdown to open up the game for the Panthers. Well, what a way to start it there for the Anahuac Panthers special teams to get started off with a touchdown right off the bat. So Landon Corbett puts the last game in the rearview mirror by taking it to pay dirt on the opening kickoff of the game. Christian Sanchez on to add the point after. Swinging gate formation moves back to normal. Zion Clark back to hold the ball. Snap back is going to throw it to Brooks Henneke for the two-point conversion. So with 11.48 remaining here in the first quarter, the Panthers strike first. Your score, 8-0. Back after this on Anoak Sports Live. Whatever it is you wrangle, whatever seeds you sow, no matter what you nurture or what you choose to grow, at Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to protect all Texans. Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Call for a free estimate, 409-267-1057, or visit them on Facebook at Title Services, Inc. And welcome back to Cougar Stadium here in Buna, Texas, where the Anahuac Panthers and Landon Corbett with a reception and the touchdown starts things off here quick with just 12 seconds coming off of the clock. And it is your Anahuac Panthers eight, the Cougars nothing, as the Panthers get ready to tee it off and the Christian Sanchez kickoff. Sanchez has it teed up. One play, 70 yards. Corbett took the opening kickoff to the house. As Zion Clark to Brooks Henneke, two-point conversion makes your score eight nothing on your Hillary Auto Insurance agent scoreboard. Sanchez has it teed up. Onside kick is gonna be taken at the 35. Good call, but the football did not take the right hop, so with 11.48 here on the clock, the first possession of the ball game for the Cougars will start at their own 35-yard line. Well, the it's kind of a surprise there for them to go on the for the onside kick, but uh, you know, after going for the two-point conversion, why not? Let's have some fun. Graffinino out of the gun, offset by Jacob. As he's fighting his way forward, he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. No, they'll give him, no. I thought they were going to give him a yard. Maybe not. Looks like the linesman is trying to give him a yard. He got about half a yard. We'll still call it second down and 10. No gain for Jacob Johnson. Two 
two wide here to the near side. That is Stark and Moss. Graffinino out of the gun. Handoff. Johnson, right side, is going to be met and dropped after a pickup of one. Coming in from his safety position, Zion Clark. Just like that, second down, I'm sorry, third down, and they're going to give him actually two on that, so third down and eight. So top of the second, one out. Houston Astros lead the Boston Red Sox one to nothing. 10.38 and counting here in the first quarter. Out of the gun is Graffinino. Four wide for the Cougars. Looking downfield. Has time. Looking downfield. And running out of time. Is being chased and he's going to throw it away. It's going to get just past the line of scrimmage. That's going to fall incomplete. And that will, that will be fourth down. So just like that, three and out for <laughs> the Panther defense. And set to do the punting is gets a terrible Low punt kick. off, but is going to take a bounce. Zion takes a chance as he is able to break away, trying to find the corner. Does uh, almost a horse collar. Close to it. But he's going to be taken down at the 34, and that is where the Panthers will set up shop for their first actual possession of the ball game. And again, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize for the uh, light pole right in the middle of our midfield view. We'll try to work around it as best as we can as the Panthers start for their second possession of the ball game. Curio under center. No receivers, two setbacks, Sanchez and Corbett pitch right. Corbett fighting his way forward. And he is going to get to the 37 yard line. Give him a pick up a three, brings up second down and seven. Sanchez, left side, is going to be met at the line of scrimmage. Nothing working there. We'll bring up third down and seven. Well, not a whole lot of not a whole lot of places to go there as Blue Jerseys were really pursuing the football and did a good job there by the by the Cougar defense and getting to Sanchez. So from the Panther, 37, third down and seven. Bailey here to the near side along with Clark, far side Corbett, out of the gun, Curiel looking inside screen to Bailey. Bailey is going to fall forward, fighting his way forward, dragging defenders with him. He's going to get eight yards and a first down. A great effort there by Bailey. I mean, just keeping on turning the legs, running downhill, and getting the first down. I'm sorry, give him 11. Move the chains, first down. I had a correction on the two-point conversion earlier. That was Garrett Dye on the two-point conversion. Pass is going to fall incomplete. Apologies, had the number wrong on that one. So Dye was the one with... The two-point conversion. 8.35 here remaining in the first quarter. Second down and 10 after the incompletion. Two backs behind Curio. Sanchez, left side, cross midfield into Buna territory. Shakes, bakes, and is going to run away from a defender. Stripped. Panthers are going to pick it up into the end wow. zone. Touchdown, Bailey. <laughs> what a crazy play that was. A little miscommunication behind the line of scrimmage. 
Sanchez able to pick up with it, get the bulk of the yard stripped at the line or at the touchdown uh, marker and then picked up by Bailey. So that's going to test me. 50, <laughs> 54 yards on the carry for Sanchez and then give Bailey four. That's Sanchez under center. Sanchez floats it up and complete for the two-point conversion. Presley Mouton. Wait, did I, I thought that was a four. Is that a nine? That's a nine. That, that is a, a nine. Adam <laughs> Galeas, the senior. I apologize. The, uh, the glare is <laughs> not beneficial tonight. So, with 8-19 remaining here in the first quarter, your new score, Anahuac leads Buna 16-0 on your Hillary Auto Insurance agent scoreboard as we'll be back with more after this on Anahuac Sports Live. From custom processing, professional guided hunts, high tanning, and gator merchandise, Porter's Processing and Alligator Farm offers a personal experience like no other. Locally owned and operated in Anahuac, Texas since 1987, Porter's has been Southeast Texas' premier choice for any hunting adventure need. Now offering full service processing of gator, deer, beef, hogs, and other wild game. Make Porter's Processing this hunting season's one-stop shop. Visit them today at portersprocessing.com or call 409-267-8413. Five plays, 66 yards, and a 54-yard scamper from Christian Sanchez and a four-yard fumble recovery from Robert Bailey extends the Panthers' lead over the Cougars, 16 to nothing. Sanchez has it teed up, gets under it, and is aiming towards the sideline, will go out of bounds, and the Cougars will set up shop for their second possession of the ball game here with 8-19 remaining boy it's been big plays for both of the panther touchdowns so far tonight I want to thank Wilcox Drugstore, 1208 Miller Street in Anahuac for the sponsorship of the first quarter here. All right, hand off left side, finding his way forward is Johnson. Johnson with a pretty good pickup there. He's going to get six. six, brings up second down and four. So six for Johnson. Gives him three carries for eight yards. Johnson, right side this time, going to be bottled up in the backfield. He's going to lose the yard. Third down and five. Third down and five from the Cougar 35. And the freshman Quandre Coates in on the tackle there. Pretty good crowd here for the Panthers making the trek from Anahuac. It's going to be Graffinino out of the gun. Two receivers to the near side, Stark and Moss for the Cougars. Fakes the handoff, Johnson looking downfield, has a man open, and He's caught. caught. The great pass and catch there by the Cougars. Their biggest play of the night. 29 yards on the pass and catch. As that was... Colt Kibido. Yeah. 
handoff met deep in the backfield. That's going to be a big loss. Loss of five. Well, congratulations to the Anahuac Lady Panther ninth grade who has went undefeated in volleyball play this year. Congratulations to the freshman team and congratulations to the junior varsity who won also in two games. So that was the first first down of the ball game for Buna. Out of the guns, Grafanino, second down and 15. Looking downfield, lifts it high, has a man, and almost intercepted. Great coverage by Zion Clark as he was able to knock that ball away. Brings up third down and long. Be nice if I updated the yardage for you guys, wouldn't it? Third down and 14 from the Panther 40. Graffinino now one for three for 29 yards. Three wide, two to the far side, one to the near side. They'll split Johnson out now, four wide, two to each side. Third down and 14, and it looks like head coach Greg Neese wants to take a timeout and talk over the defense. We'll take it with them with 5.55 remaining here in the first quarter. Anahuac 16, view to nothing, back after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Anahuac Sports Live is brought to you in part by Hillary Otto, insurance agent with Texas Farm Bureau, Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm, Title Services Incorporated, Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, Chambers County Abstract Company, Third Coast Integrated Martial Arts, Turn to Specialty Companies, and Wilcox Drugstore in Anahuac. Big happy birthday to uh, Roberto Ramos, the sophomore here for the Panthers. Graffinino is going to take it himself, and he's not going to get far. He's going to get wrestled down back in the backfield quickly. Jonathan Valencia. So Graffinino picks up three. We'll bring up fourth down. Fourth down and 11. They have kept the offense on the field. We almost have to at this point, and at the point where they're at in the field. Four wide, Graffinino under pressure. Bailey chasing after him. It's going to float it out of bounds, and that's going to be incomplete and a turnover on down. Well, good containment there by the Panther defense to chase him down and having, having to throw it away there. And uh, like I said, you had, I mean, the Cougars had to go for it there on fourth down. They were into Panther territory the first time that they've done so here tonight. And uh, trying to catch this Panther offense this early in the ball game with 5.08 remaining. Uh, you know, they didn't really have much choice there, Alex. No. Very quickly, the Panther offense has uh, jumped out all over. Had to get something going on offense, but the Panther defense has been too strong. As of yet, 5.08 remaining here in the first quarter. Third drive of the ball game for the Panthers. Confusion up front. Timeout, Panthers. We'll take it with them. Back after this on Anahuac Sports Live. You've heard about shopping local. How about banking local? Since 1976, Anahuac National Bank is the only locally owned and operated bank in Chambers County. We know you see Anahuac National Bank folks out in the community supporting our schools, veterans, and nonprofits. Why not bank where you live? These experienced banking professionals understand local businesses and the housing market. Visit online today at anbank.net 
Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Want to let everybody know that you can donate to Anahuac Sports Live. All donations this week, once again, will go to the Anahuac 14U CTEX Grit softball team. Donations of $10 or more will get you a free AP Rally Towel. Want to let everybody know that the AP Rally Towels uh, that have been given out thus far, if, you, if I owe you one, please come out next Thursday as the pass falls incomplete intended for Corbett on the near sideline. So Curio with the incompletion to Corbett. Brings up second down and 10. From the Panther, 36. Curio under center, Sanchez the lone setback. Quick toss to uh, Corbett is almost intercepted as Dylan Rogalski knocked it away. And that's one of those things that you get more experience with. The sophomore quarterback knew that's where the play was supposed to go and threw it immediately when there was coverage and probably should have been pulled back down. Well, yeah, they should have. I mean, that's, you know, he, he's, he's learning – uh, every week he's he's getting a little bit better as far as his knowledge of the game. The, as Coach Nice mentioned last week that, uh, you know, the game's starting to slow down for him and getting a little bit uh, easier to figure out. Third down and ten after two incompletions in the round. Corbett is going to make some moves. He's going to get across the 40. He'll fall forward to the 41. That's going to be a pickup of five, but that's going to bring up fourth down and five. Well, first fourth down of the night for the Panther offense as the punting unit will come on. So Christian Sanchez will come on to attempt, I'm sorry, not attempt, to handle the punting duties for the Panthers. Back deep for the Cougars is the quarterback, Graffanino. That's not right either. As bobbled, still bobbled, on the ground, finally jumps on it as Caden Dill, the sophomore, was the one who was back deep for the Cougars. No harm, no foul, as he's able to fall on it. We'll bring up first down and 10 with 414 remaining here in the first quarter. 16-0, Anna White leading Buena on your Hillary Auto Insurance agent scoreboard. Again, we appreciate everybody joining us here tonight. Want to let you know that we are on a cell phone signal, but if you would, let us know in the chat. Um, how the picture and the audio is. We'd greatly appreciate it, what, what it looks like and <laughs> what it sounds like on y'all's end. First down and 10. Is that the I, this is not a good angle. Graffinito complete. As he's going to get it to his receiver, Stark. Stark picks up 14. Second first down of the game for Buena. Hand off to Johnson. Is going to get met at the line of scrimmage. Well, they're going to give him maybe that other. It does look like they're trying to give him a yard again. Yeah, they gave him a yard on it. All right, so a yard for Johnson brings up second down and nine. That is six carries for three yards for Jacob Johnson. Second down and nine. We'll tick under three minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Graffinino will be out of the gun, too wide. Johnson offset to his right. Buna moving left to right, under pressure. Is going oh. to almost run over the referee. Gets it away and is going to be caught. Wow. That's going to be caught for a pickup of 10 and move the chains. Well, what a great play there. I mean, scrambling, almost hitting the referee, getting it off. 
So Logan Moss with the reception for 10. Third first down of the ball game for the Cougars. First down and 10 from the Cougar 46. Well, good job for, of Moss coming back up for that, that kind of a short pass. As you can hear the Anahuac faithful here. I've heard it multiple times. They're calling for holding, but I haven't seen much of it so, so far. From the 46, Graffinino out of the gun. Johnson makes a move around the left side. He's going to get across midfield and get pushed out of bounds. That is going to get pushed out of bounds at the 49. Number two. That's going to be a pickup of six. We'll bring up second down and four. Seven carries, nine yards for Jacob Johnson. So there is a flag on the play, and it is a hold against the Cougars. So I will have to adjust that. That is one. So that's a six-yard penalty. So give him a pickup of four. Makes it seven yards on seven carries. First penalty of the ball game for the Cougars. First down and 15. Graffinino out of the gun. Offset to his left by Johnson. Two receivers to the far side. Going long. Good coverage. And is going to be intercepted. Boy, that's one of the prettiest plays you'll see all year. Javion West coming up with a gorgeous interception. Played his man perfectly. He took the inside, forced his receiver to the outside, made the diving interception first. Let's look at the Chambers County Abstract Company replay. Because they're saying it's incomplete, Trent. Really? Well, let's look at it anyway. The ball was thrown up. Oh, he dropped the ball right at the end, Alex. We just couldn't get a good view of it from where we're at. But nonetheless, what a great play oh, and coverage. That was great coverage by West. Second down and 15. Cougars from their own 41. Too wide to the near side. Cougars don't like what they see. They're going to take their first time out of the ballgame, and we'll take it with them. 203 remaining here in the first quarter. It's Anahuac 16. Buna nothing back after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Since 1948, Wilcox Drugstore has been the Anahuac area's most experienced and trusted pharmacy. Continuing its long-lasting reputation for personal attention to all your medical needs, Wilcox Drugstore offers counsel, refills, transfers, compounding, flu shots, and delivery. Visit pharmacist Dave Wilcox and his experienced staff today at 1208 Miller Street in Anahuac or call 409-267-6141. Wilcox Drugstore, delivering solutions, delivering confidence. He's Trent Hart. I'm Alex Outcher and Blake Ferguson on the camera tonight bringing you the action here from Cougar Stadium here in Buma. Want to give Amanda Abshire a shout out as she watches from home. Unable to make the game tonight for reasons. We do appreciate uh, you tuning in tonight. I did see some birds flying over here, overhead uh, here earlier, so we definitely do appreciate you tuning in to Anahuac Sports Live, not missing the action tonight. Second down and 15, out of the gun, handoff, nothing working. That's going to be a loss of two. Johnson couldn't get anywhere. Back there on the tackle was Presley Mouton and Non Fam. Well, we talked about it in the pregame about what defense is going to show up here tonight, and, and so far the Anahuac defense has been getting good. Uh, penetration up front, getting through the, the Buna offensive line and getting into the backfield to make some defensive plays as it's third and long situation for the Cougars once more. Third down and 17 now for the Cougars. As the Panther defense has stood strong. Offset to his right by Johnson, too wide to the near side. Looking. Unleashes is going to be high and incomplete. Fourth down, Cougars. Quick update, bottom of the third, two outs, nobody on 
Michael Brantley up to bat. And he's got two strikes, no balls, as it's the Houston Astros over the Red Sox currently one to nothing. As Houston leads the ALCS three to two, as they're looking to get back to the World Series since 2017. 19. 2019. <laughs> <laughs> That's the last time they won it. Punt is going to take a Cougar bounce. Is going to bounce at the 31. Will come to rest at the 27. And that is where the Panthers will set up shop here with a buck three remaining in the first quarter. Again, shout out to Wilcox Drugstore for sponsoring the first quarter of play. You can go and visit them at 1208 Miller Street, Nanawak. 409-267-6141. First down and 10 from the 27. Curiel will come under center. He'll send Corbett out. Sanchez the lone back. Pitch left. Sanchez going to be caught from behind, not before he picks up two yards. Second down and eight. Thank you, Aunt Fifi, TJ Barrett, MJ, and Go S in the chat for letting us know how everything sounds and looks on YouTube. Appreciate everybody joining us here tonight, and don't be afraid to interact with us in the chat. Sanchez straight up Broadway, 40, cross midfield. It's going to be caught from behind with a horse collar. There is no flag. Nope know how much more horse collar it could have been. Yeah, that was pretty evident there. Nonetheless, a pickup of 35 for Sanchez as he has broken off two big runs. 91 yards on four carries. Fourth first down of the game for the Panthers. Corbett, right side, trying to break a tackle, does bulldozing his way forward. He's going to get helped out by a Cougar defender pushing his way forward. Looks like that's going to be a pickup of five. That's going to be the end of the first quarter of play where the Panthers lead Buna 16 to nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you can donate to Anahuac Sports Live and get your special message announced right here on the air. All you got to do is scan any of the QR codes on your screen or go to Venmo at Anahuac Sports Live, Cash App, Dollar Sign, Anahuac Sports Live, or all of the donation links are in the description of the video below. So second down and four from the Cougar 25. Curiel under center, lone back is Sanchez. Sanchez. Right side, trying to fight his way forward. He's going to get a pickup of one. We'll bring up third down. 92 yards on five carries for Christian. Second third down of the ball game for the Panthers. Third down and one. Curiel under center quickly. Pitch right. Corbett gets the first down across the 20. Cuts back. Breaks the tackle, fighting his way into the end zone. Touchdown. From 23 yards out, Landon Corbett hits pay dirt. Well, the dual-headed monster is in full effect for the Panther offense here tonight. Sanchez close to the century mark. We'll see where Landon is at after that 
30, Great touchdown. 37 yards on four carries. They're going to go for two again as Corbett was under center and is in for two. So with 11.25 remaining here in the first half, the Panthers have expanded their lead 24 to nothing over Buna. We'll be back with more after this on Anawak Sports Live. Hello, my name is Mark Poggles, and I'm the pastor at Community Christian Fellowship Church in Oak Island, Texas. I would like to personally invite you to join us for Bible study during the week and our church services on Sunday morning. We have a nursery for the little ones, and our church family will greet you with a smile on their face and a loving heart. Come and celebrate with us as we study God's Word and give Him all the praise and thanks He deserves. Hope to see you there. Take care and God bless. Go Panthers! Back here from Cougar Stadium in Buna, Texas, where the Panthers have extended their lead 24 to nothing with 11.25 remaining here in the first half on your Hillary Auto Insurance Agent scoreboard. The drive took a minute 38. It was five plays, 73 yards. It was a 23-yard Corbett rush to pay dirt. He also converted the point after two-point conversion to make your score 24 nothing, Sanchez has it teed up at the 40. Low line drive kick is going to bounce and be taken at the 20. 30, fighting his way forward. 35, still fighting his way forward. He's going to fall forward to about the 37 or 38. We'll see where they mark it. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 38. Be interesting to see if they'll get away from their bread and butter of the of the running game and Jacob Johnson to see if they have to focus more through the air, as I'm sure this is not what they were expecting after the game against East Chambers last week. I want to thank Ashani Perry donating to the channel, and she says, "Good luck, AP." So it's going to be Grappanino out of the gun. Motion is Johnson. Johnson's going to get the handoff straight up the gut. He's going to fight his way forward to the 41. Be a pickup of four. We'll bring up second down and six. Nine carries for nine yards for Jacob Johnson this evening. Picks up about three yards. I actually gave him a yard. So. Second down and seven. Graffinino out of the gun. Under pressure. We've said that all night. He's going to throw it out of bounds. Incomplete. We'll bring a third down and seven. Panther D has put pressure on Graffinino all night long. Well, that they have. That's probably like the fourth or fifth time he's had to get out of the pocket and just throw it away. As the Panther defense is getting doing a great job at making sure that he can't get his feet planted because he's got a heck of an arm, out. He really does. He gets some arch on the ball, and it, uh, get ups there, it gets up there pretty high. So the Cougars are going to come four wide, third down and seven. Graffinino out of the gun, sends a man in motion, fakes it to him. He's going to keep it himself. 40, 45, cuts back across midfield in the Panther territory, will be brought to rest at the 41. That's going to be a pickup of 23 and a first down. Fourth first down of the evening for the Cougars. Graffinino, the leading rusher with 26 yards on two carries for the Cougars. So first down and 10 from the Panther, 41. Cougars in plus territory for the second time this evening. Four wide, two to each side. Buna now moving right to left. Graffinino 
sets back. There's a pole. Throws it, apparently, and was incomplete. <laughs> Definitely hard to see at that angle, isn't it, Alex, I around mean, that I pole? Mean, he couldn't have stopped any, any worse. <laughs> I didn't even see the pass go out. Second down and 10 with 9.52 remaining. Let me get over here. Well, we would have set up on the opposite side, but it's definitely crowded over there in the home press box. So we're having to deal with a uh, light pole right here on the 50-yard line. That is a rather nice-looking tough shed they have there. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Graffinino out of the gun. I'm just playing. Fakes the end around. Same play. He's going to keep it himself across the 40, but that's where he's going to get met. So he's going to pick up one. We'll bring up third down and nine. Here comes to be in a hate. I was just kidding. We'll tick under nine and a half remaining here in the first half. Out of the guns, Graffinino offset to his right by Johnson. Panthers free play as they jump offside. Lofts it up and over the intended receiver. Nonetheless, it's going to be a five-yard penalty on the Panthers. We'll bring up third down and four. Okay. And we should have brought some off they over here. Should got we? any off? <laughs> There is absolutely no wind here in Buna. And that was what the call was. Defensive offsides on the Panthers. Five-yard penalty. I believe there's a shrimp boat out here stranded in a pasture. <laughs> it's been out there for roughly 20 days or so. Well, and obviously his hold was full of shrimp because that's what it smells like. So third down and four from the Panther 35. Panthers trying to hold again. Same formation for the Cougars. Three wide. Graffinito offset by Johnson. Sets back. Pass complete. And fighting his way forward for a pickup of 11 is Kibido. Second reception for 40 yards. That is uh, 54 yards passing. For Graffinino. Actually, it's 64. Handoff. Johnson looking to break it outside. There is going to be a flag for holding, and that was at the line of scrimmage, so that's going to be a 10 yard penalty. That'll be their second holding penalty of the game, their third penalty overall, and that will bring up sec uh, first down and 20 for the Cougars. Well, as you can hear, the, the Anahuac fans over here on the visiting side have consistently been calling the holding call and only the second flag being thrown on it by the officiating crew here tonight. But a costly hold there in Panther territory by the Cougars. Second quarter being brought to you in part by Southeast Texas Grit Baseball and Softball. S-E-T-X GritSports.org. That's what I thought. Oh, yeah. We, oh, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> open, open 14U softball tryout this Sunday, 3 p.m. at the Anahuac High School softball field. Graffinino out of the gun, sets back, looking downfield, going for it all, has a man, and that one is intercepted. Wow. Zion Clark holds on to it in the end zone. This time, for real, turnover, Cougars. What a play by Zion Clark. Well, definitely got to take another look at that play as the ball was definitely aired out here on the Chambers County Abstract Company replay. As you see, I mean, he set his foot, got rid of the football, and, I mean, it was a big one. And Zion able to hold on to it going to the ground and picks up the interception. So 8-19 remaining here in the first half. The Panthers set up shop at their own 20. 
Curiel rolling out under pressure, gets the ball away, is complete to Galeas. Galeas across the 30 is going to get marked out of bounds at the 33. That'll be a pickup of 13, first down. So Galeas with his first reception of the ball game. Move the chains, first down and 10 from the Panther 33. Curiel, pitch right, Corbett looking for some running room, fighting his way forward. It's going to be met with a host of Cougar defenders. Not before he gets... Uh, some extracurricular going down there. Well, I thought he picked up six, and that's not where they were putting up the ball. Or actually, maybe they did. Looks more like maybe. Yeah, he did pick. Yeah, six. He did pick up six. Forty-three yards on five carries for Landon. Second down and four. Yeah, we're closer. Second and four. <laughs> Handoff. Corbett. Left side breaks a tackle. Fighting his way forward. He's going to pick up those four yards. It's going to be close to a first down. They had a, the, He had the ball on the hash mark. If it's on the hash mark, then it's a first down. That should be a first down. Well, they're looking at it. And they're going to call the chain gang out. That will determine if it's a pickup of four or a pickup of three. You know, this is the first time I think I've seen the chain gang come out this year. It is. I mean, we had, there's been a couple of close first down calls uh, in the season. But, yeah, the first time I've seen the chain gang as it is going to come up short, about a half a yard. So give them a pickup of three and a half. Third down and a half. Great spirit from the Panthers cheerleaders tonight. If anybody's in the stands and has some uh, some off, would like to bring it up to us, that'd be great. It's quick. Alvarez doubles. Runners now at third and second, bottom of the fourth. Pitch. Sanchez finding his way forward, picks up the first down and more. Pickup of eight for Sanchez. Puts him at 100 yards on six carries, first down, seven first downs for the Panthers. Boy, they cannot stop Jordan as of late. Well, good double there by Jordan to get Bregman over to third as Sanchez has the carry here and a pickup of what looks like maybe five. It'll be second and five for the Panthers. Pickup of five. Hundred and five yards for Sanchez now. Second down and five. Landon. Is that Landon? We'll see when he gets it to the bottom of the pile here. That was not Corbett. That's number thirteen. No, thirty three. Oh, thirty three, excuse me. Delo. That's Delo on the carry. So that was a pickup of uh oh, they're gonna give him two. Yep. Third, third down and two. Curiel, quarterback sneak, is going to get to the 40, and that'll be enough for a first down. Eighth first down for the Panthers this evening. First down and 10 from the Cougar 40. So Correa up to bat, one ball, no strikes, two men on third and second. Bottom of the fourth, no outs. As Houston is leading the series and this game one to nothing. So De La o in the backfield. Quick pass, Sanchez. Sanchez stops. Moves and gets taken out way out of bounds. I'm surprised that flag didn't come out. Of course, after the East Chambers game, I'm not surprised. 
We weren't going backwards, Trent. We weren't going backwards. Pick, pick up a four for Sanchez, 109 on eight carries. Second down and six for the Panthers. We'll go second and six. In Cougar territory, Curiel will come under center too wide to the far side. Rolls right, looking downfield, has his man, throws it up. Clark just out of the fingertips of Zion. Now that was actually Corbett, the intended receiver. And if he had a couple more steps, that probably would have been pay dirt and another touchdown for the Panthers. I officially don't like this side of the field. I can't see the numbers. So 3-2 to Correa. Runners in scoring positions, bottom of the fourth here. Trying to keep everybody updated. You might be watching both at the same time. But we appreciate everybody joining us with the ALCS on tonight. We do not, We definitely do not have GameCast up on his computer and the game on my phone. No, Kira, not at all. Under center, pitch right, Sanchez dodges a defender, pushes his way forward, fighting his way forward, picks up the first down. Great effort there by Sanchez, having his one of his best games of the year so far. Pickup of eight, moves the chains, ninth first down. Well, Correa went down swinging, now up to bat is Kyle Tucker, one out, bottom of the fourth. Runners on third and second. Uh, Panthers really eating up some clock as they're going to go over four minutes on this uh, drive on this play. Curiel out of the gun. He's offset to his left by uh, Sanchez. And the Panthers are going to call their final timeout of the first half. We're going to take it with them. 24 0. Anawak still leads Buna back after this on Anawak Sports Live. Looking for just the right bank? For a real community bank, locally owned and operated since 1976, come to Anawak National Bank. Offering services from your first checking account to mobile and online banking to business and home loans. This is Texas banking at its best. Find us online at anbank.net. Anawak National Bank, Chambers County's only locally owned and independently operated bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. I want to remind everybody, you can donate to Anawak Sports Live. All donations this week are be given to the Anawak CTEX 14U Grit softball team. Donations of $10 or more will get a free AP rally towel. And if you haven't gotten your free AP rally towel for your donations thus far for the season, we will be giving those out next Thursday at the middle school football game at Hanawak High School Football Stadium. So just come up to the press box and get your ASL or your rally towel. Curiel looking downfield. Perfect spiral as Corbett just couldn't come down with it. To answer the question in the chat, uh, Landon Corbett started off the ball game with a 70-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Robert Bailey had a fumble recovery off of a uh, – when uh, Christian Sanchez put the ball on the turf at the four – and then uh, Landon had another touchdown here at the beginning of the second quarter. Those were the three scores of the evening. Uh, those were the three touchdowns of the evening for the Panthers. So Tucker goes down swinging. Guriel up to bat now. Two outs, bottom of the fourth. Corbett straight up Broadway. Breaks it outside. Arm tackle is going to knock him out of bounds, not before he picks up a huge gain. That's going to be a pickup of 20. Move the chains. Tenth first down. And now 66 yards rushing on seven carries. Well, Guriel walks. Bases are loaded now for McCormick. I must have intentionally walked Yuli. Yep. Right side, nothing going. We'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and goal. Need Chazzy Fizz to uh, come through here and run her second and third with no outs. You got to take advantage of that. 
Mercurio under center, I formation behind him. In the round, Corbett jumping to the outside. There's going to be a holding, so this is going to be a huge loss, not only on the run. The run's going to be a loss of three, but tack on uh, 10, so it'll be second down and 23. Well, first penalty flag on the Panthers tonight, isn't it? No, second. Yeah, second flag on the Panthers tonight. So double whammy there for the Panthers. Still waiting for them to announce it and mark it. Well, they're talking it over, maybe the placement. Do you want second down and 13, or do you want first and 20? <laughs> They are declining it, so it's going to be second down and 13. Holding call against the Panthers, declined by the Rivers. Interesting. Well, McCormick goes down swinging for the third out and leaves three stranded. And after four innings, it is still Houston one, the Red Sox zero. Third down and goal from the 13. Panthers going to have to hurry. Seven seconds left on the play clock. It's Corbett out of the gun, sends a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself. Trying to get around the right side, he's going to lose more yardage. It's going to be a loss of five back to the 20, and that will probably bring up a Christian Sanchez 37-yard field goal. Well, 37 yards should be well within Sanchez's distance. Nine carries, 58 yards now for Landon. So it's going to be marked at the 24. Snap, kick is good. So with 221 remaining here, 220 remaining in the first half, tack on a Christian Sanchez 38-yard field goal. Makes the score 27-0. We'll be back with more after this on Anahuac Sports Live. Whatever it is you wrangle, whatever seeds you sow, No matter what you nurture or what you choose to grow, at Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to protect all Texans. Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Call for a free estimate, 409-267-1057, or visit them on Facebook at Title Services, Inc. He's Trent Hart. I'm Alex Outram. Blake Ferguson on the camera. With 2.20 remaining here in the first half, the Panthers have extended their lead 27 to nothing on your Hillary Auto Insurance agent scoreboard. Sanchez gets the kickoff, is bouncing, and will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. And that is where the Cougars will set up shop here for their next possession here of the first half. And if you're the Cougars, you definitely want to try to get something going. 
in, going into halftime. They get the ball in the second half. So first down and 10 from the 25 for the Cougars. Down. Inside well, pitch pass. is going to go nowhere. So the pass will go for zero. Kibito, three receptions, 40 yards. Pass balls to the turf there. And that's going to bring up third down and 10 for the Cougars. Very quickly trying to get the ball back to the Panthers. Buck 39 remaining here in the first half. Graf Fanino, receiver screen, 25, 30, 40. Fighting his way forward is gonna go down to the 47. Pick up a 22. A little inside three. Will be the sixth first down. I say 22. 76 yards passing for Graffinino. Out of the gun. Three wide. One to the near side, two to the far. Line move, no flag. Intercepted by Landon at the 35. Across midfield is going to take it to the 46 of the Cougars and the Panthers will set up once more second interception of the game for Graffinino. As we go back to the Chambers County Abstract Company replay and Landon Corbett positioned himself perfectly in the secondary as Graffinino sets back to pass, let it go and it went right over the head of his intended receiver and Corbett ended up with it. Buck 12 remaining here in the first half. Curiel out of the gun. Sanchez is going to throw it. He's got lifts it up to and Bailey. Off it's right back. Intercepted. That is terrible for Sanchez's stat line as he's 0 for 1 with an interception. Well, he had Zion here Say that and just sheet. didn't quite have enough arm on it. So, back-to-back -back turnovers from each side will give the Cougars the ball back with just a little bit over a minute left here in the first half. I want to thank Southeast Texas Grit Baseball and Softball for sponsoring the second quarter. CTexGritSports.org. Open 14U softball tryout this Sunday, 3 p.m. at Anahuac High School softball field. Invite everybody that is 07 or 08 birth year to come out and try out for the remainder of the fall season as the Cougars get ready to try and make something happen here before they go to the locker room. Graffinino under pressure. Sidearm. Boy, it gets off a pretty good pass. I mean, my, talking about making something out of nothing. Well, I mean, threw it right around Caden Hampton with a sidearm throw. It's a pickup of eight. Second catch, 22 yards for Stark. Graffinino, handoff, Johnson right side. Cuts it back up 
and it's going to be met there by Jonathan Cooper. And he's just short of the first down, perhaps. Uh, maybe they gave it to him. Yeah. They're going to move the chains. First down and 10. Clock continues to run under 30 seconds now. Shotgun formation. Graffinino back to pass. Rolling right. Under back pressure. Left. Still under pressure. Fumble is going to be knocked away and caught. Making room. Quandre Coach, the freshman. After being knocked away, it looked like in on the pressure was Caden Hampton. Hampton knocked it out of the quarterback's hands, and there was Coates for it to fall right into. And now with 11 seconds remaining here in at the end of the first half, the Panthers have a chance to tack on more points. They do not have any timeouts left. Well, I'll tell you what, Coates won at the end zone after that, I'm yes, telling you. center sends Corbett in motion looking right throwing it up for Zion jump ball is going to be in and out of the hands nice defense by the Cougars there on the coverage was number 34 Dylan Rogalski well the Panthers will have time just for one more play before the end of the half and they'll probably try it again here for the corner of the end zone. It uh, looks like they're going to go ahead and uh, shut it down and attempt the field goal. Ah, I see that. So Christian's going to mark it at the 20. Would be a 30-yard field goal attempt. Timeout Cougars. Timeout Cougars trying to... Uh, Ice Sanchez, as he has already made his first attempt of the evening as we move to the bottom of the fifth inning. Houston still leading 1 0. So Sanchez getting some good work on uh, field goal attempts. Well, more work. It's nice, nice that he's not taking him on first down this game. <laughs> Definitely that, and you know Sanchez, uh, you know, getting plenty of work on the field goal game this year, and that's good to see. I mean, um, I'd be surprised if he doesn't go somewhere to be a place kicker or even a punter at the next level. Always in need on Saturdays. Got the uh, Buna band lined up here, ready to go for their halftime performance. Also, senior night for them. So, again, Sanchez is going to have the ball marked at the 20. 30 yard attempt, snap back. Kick is up. Kick is good. All zeros on the clock here to end the half as the Panthers extend their lead 30 to nothing. We'll be back with the Chambers County Abstract Company Halftime Show. After this, your score, Anahuac leads Buna 30 to nothing. Back after this on Anahuac Sports Live.
Gas Company. Gage Scott Brown. Gage is the son of Sheena Brown. Gage has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing the tuba. He is currently serving as section leader for the band. Gage advanced to Erie in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Gage's future plans are to study law enforcement to become a police officer. Abby Blair Burt. Abby is the daughter of Aaron Burt and Terry Harvey. Abby has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing percussion. She is currently serving as a squad leader for the band. Abby has been a member of the BHS drum line and has also been a member of the Cougar Air drill team for three years. Abby advanced to Erie in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She has taken dance for 13 years at Studio B and has also received a Certificate of Excellence in piano. Abby is a member of the National Honor Society. She has been a part of the CTE program, culinary, one act play, and broadcast. Abby has also participated in UIL Cochrane. Abby's future plans are to attend Lamar University majoring in pre med. She would like to become a pediatric surgeon. Isabella Francesca Caputo and Sebastian Connor Caputo. They are the daughter and son of Anissa Stone and Andrew Caputo. They are being escorted by their grandmother, Letty Stone, and sister, Catalina. Bella has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing the clarinet. She is ser currently serving as squad leader for the band. Bella has been a member of the BHS flags for two years and has advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She is a member of the Spanish Club where she served as treasurer and secretary. Bella is also a member of the National Honor Society, Art Club, and Choir where she served as soprano secretary. She has also participated in UIL Science. Bella's future plans are to attend the University of Texas in Austin, where she will major in fine arts and minor in astronomy. She would one day like to open a cat cafe. Connor has been a four-year member of VHS band playing the trumpet. He has participated in UIL Soul Ensemble and advanced to state. Connor advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cooper Marching Band. Connor's future plans are to attend college and join the National Guard. <laughs> Katie Lynn Chambers. Katie is the daughter of Jeff and Karen Chambers. She is being escorted by her parents and brother Jason. Katie has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the alto saxophone. She is currently serving as a drum major and section leader for the band. Katie is a member of the VHS twirling team where she serves as captain. She has received a superior rating and medal to be performing six times, allowing her to advance the stage where she is also medal. Katie can throw up the three batons, knives, and fire. Katie advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She is a member of the National Honor Society, serving as historian, student council, serving as senior class president, Spanish club, serving as vice president, Christian gymnastics action, and football. Katie has also participated in UIL for four years, where she has placed in science. Katie's future plans are to earn a degree in animal science in hope of doing research on animals in different states and countries. 
She would like to continue her education to become a wildlife veterinarian. Jordan Taylor Clark. Jordan is the daughter of Brian and Darcy Clark. She is being escorted by her parents and sister Morgan. Jordan has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the clarinet. She is currently serving as a squad leader and social lieutenant for the band. She has also earned a place on the front rank. Jordan has been a member of the VHS flag team for four years, where she has served as captain for two of those years. She has participated in UIL Song Ensemble, advancing to state. Jordan advanced to Erie in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Jordan is a member of the National Honor Society, serving as treasurer, student council, serving as secretary, Spanish club, serving as social officer, book club, and art club. She has also participated in UIL literary criticism and prose and poetry. Jordan's future plans are to attend San Houston State University, majoring, majoring in kinesiology and minoring in biology. She would like to become a pediatric occupational therapist. Bryson Eugene Durr. Bryson is the son of Nick and Aaron Harbroder. Bryson has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing percussion. He is currently serving as captain, section leader, and squad leader for the band. Bryson has been a member of the VHS drumline for four years, where he is currently serving as captain. He has participated in UIL Southern Ensemble and advancing to state. Bryson advanced to area in 2019 to end the state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Bryson is a member of the choir serving as president, student council, book club, and the VHS brass line. He has also participated in both the BAST and the STOC swim team. Bryson's future plans are to either study music production or join the U.S. Navy. Ariana Madison Elliott. Ariana is the daughter of John and Amy Elliott. Ariana has been a four-year member of the DHS band playing the clarinet. She is currently serving as drum major and section leader and has been lieutenant and squad leader. Ariana is also a member of the VHS drum line and playing the bass drum. She has earned membership to the all-region band advancing to area. She hopes this year she will earn a place in the all-state band. She has participated in UIL Solon Ensemble advancing to state twice. Ariana advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Ariana is a member of the National Honor Society, Student Council, Spanish Club, serving as president, one act play, and book club. She is currently serving as the Chamber of Commerce sweetheart. In addition, she has participated in UIL academics. Ariana is also an active member of the Central Baptist Church Youth Group. Ariana's future plans are to attend Texas State University, where she will study sociology with a minor in foreign language, and to hope to one day teach English abroad. Asia Jocelyn Jackson. Asia is the daughter of Marquis Jackson and April Stevens. She is being escorted by her mother and grandmother, Carrie Stevens. Asia has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the trombone. She is currently serving as a section leader for the band. Asia advanced to Erie in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Asia is a member of the choir and participates in instrumental class. 
She is also Michael Jackson's biggest fan. Asia's future plans are to go to college to become a sound engineer and music producer. She would also like to participate in African American studies. And if you know you want, if you know you want to get one from this, you better take some money from this. Because you carry it about this up. Karen Lynn King. Karen is the daughter of Brent King and Mabel Chandler. She is being escorted by her mother. Karen has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing the trumpet. She is currently serving as section leader and squad leader. Karen advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Karen is a member of Book Club, Robotics, and Spanish Club. Karen's future plans are to attend Lamar University, where she will major in nursing. Mackenzie Claire McDonald. Mackenzie is the daughter of Lathan and Shannon McDonald. Mackenzie has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the trumpet. She is currently a band officer serving as librarian. Mackenzie advanced to the area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Mackenzie participates in the Agricultural Science Program and has earned her Alonso Veterinary Medical Application Certification and received B Awards for Livestock Production and Vent Med. She participates in honors classes and dual credit classes at Lamar State College Orange. Mackenzie is also a member of the Spanish Club. In addition, she is an active member of the First United Methodist Youth Group and is youth representative for the Council on Ministry Committee and operates the media stream technology for church services. Mackenzie is currently serving as Juno Red Bud of Street Art for 2021. Mackenzie's future plans are to attend Lamar University, then transfer to Texas A&M to study veterinary science. She would like to become a small animal veterinarian. Jacob Bryce McQuarrie. Jacob is the son of Kelly Baker. Jacob has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing the tuba. He is currently serving as the setup crew captain for the band. Jacob advanced to the area in 2019 and was state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Jacob is a member of the choir and is manager for both football and basketball. Jacob's future plans are to attend Western Iowa Tech to become a music instrument repairman. Marissa Nicole Menard. Marissa is the daughter of Joe Menard and Melinda Harrell. She is being escorted by her parents and her sister, Rebecca. Marissa has been a four-year member of the BHS band playing the clarinet. She has served as historian and a front rank member. Marissa has been a member of the BHS Black Team for four years, where she has served as lieutenant for two of those years. Marissa advanced to the area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She is a member of the National Honor Society and Spanish Club. Marissa is currently in cosmetology school and will graduate with a cosmetology license. Rachel Arlen Mitchell. <laughs> Rachel is the daughter of Dennis and Kelly Mitchell. She is being escorted by her parents, her brother Daniel, and her sister Taylor. 
Rachel has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the alto and tenor saxophone. She is currently serving as a uniform captain, squad leader, and section leader for the band. She has also earned a place on the front rank. Rachel is a member of the VHS black team where she has served as a tenor. She has advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She is a member of the National Honor Society, serving as secretary, book club, serving as vice president, and robotics, serving as project manager. Rachel is also participating in UIL congressional debate, advancing to state, computer science, advancing to reading, literary criticism, and poetry. Rachel's future plans are to attend Texas A&M University majoring in aerospace engineering. She also plans to join the four of cadets as well as the Fighting Aggie Marching Band. Elena Leanne Richards. Elena is the daughter of Lisa Richards and the late Randy Richards. She is being escorted by her mother, Joe Snyder, and siblings, Ian and Rena. Elena has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the flute. She is currently serving as section leader and has been a squad leader. Elena has participated in year all an ensemble, earning a first division. Elena advanced to area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She has been a member of the choir and culinary. Elena's future plans are to attend Sam Houston State University, where she will major in education. Ashton Sanford. Ashton is the son of Brad Sanford and Marcy Williams. He is being escorted by John Williams. Ashton has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing on the trumpet. He advanced to the area in 2019 and to state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. Ashton's future plans are to attend Lamar University, where he will study entrepreneurship and become a real estate agent. being escorted by her parents and brother, Shelton. Katie has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the clarinet and bass clarinet. She is currently serving as section leader for the band. Katie is currently a member of the VHS flag team. She advanced the area in 2019 and the state this year with the Cougar Marching Band. She has participated in twirling and soccer. Katie is a member of Book Club and FFA. Katie's future plans are to join the U.S. Army. She would like to attend Lamar University online in hopes to do engineering in the Army. Mackenzie and Uribe. Mackenzie is the daughter of Oscar and Sari, Sarah Uribe. Mackenzie has been a four-year member of the VHS band playing the trumpet. She is currently serving as squad leader. Mackenzie has participated in UIL for an ensemble for dancing to state. She has been a member of the Cuba Air Drill Team for four years, serving as captain for two of those. Alex Altram, Trent Hart, Blake Ferguson here from Cougar Stadium in Buna. We're at the half. The Panthers lead Buna 30 to nothing. Looking over some of the first half stats here. First for the Buna Cougars, it's uh, Jacob Johnson, who has uh, 10 carries for 12 yards. 
leading rusher on three carries is the quarterback, Dylan Graffanino, with uh, 27 yards on three carries. And uh, seven for 16, 84 yards, including two interceptions through the air for Graffanino. I checked that. That's actually 94 yards. Uh, Logan Moss has two receptions for 32. Kyler Stark has two receptions for 22. Colt Kibido, three receptions for 40 yards. They had six first downs in the first half. And that was uh, pretty much just for Buna, as uh, was not really able to get uh, get much going in the first half. Panthers defense looking stellar in that first half, creating two turnovers and actually creating three, really, uh, turnover on downs for Buna. So three turnovers in the first half for the Cougars. As for the Panthers, leading rusher, 10 carries, 117 yards for Christian Sanchez. Does include a fumble. Nine carries, 58 yards, and a, a touchdown for Landon Corbett. Robert Bailey has four yards on the ground after he recovered the Christian Sanchez fumble and took it to the house. Uh, Thomas De La O with uh, two carry, or I'm sorry, one carry for two yards. Curio one carry for two yards as well. Two for seven for Marcus through the air. He's got uh, 31 yards. Bailey with 11 and Galeas with 20. Two penalties for 20 yards for the Panthers. I have them at 10 first downs. 0 for, I'm sorry, that was uh, two for four on third down. Um, also, scoring-wise, you had Landon start start off the game with a 70-yard opening kick touchdown to start the scoring. As I said earlier, Robert Bailey recovered a Christian Sanchez fumble, took it in from four yards. Landon also took in a 23-yard carry to uh, score a touchdown. Two field goals for Christian Sanchez this evening. He's got he's been good on both from 38 and from 30 yards out. As for scoring updates from around the area, it was East Chambers on top of Kirbyville, 14 to 10, as Kirbyville has literally just scored a touchdown to get within four of the uh, East Chambers Buccaneers. It is, where did my link go? I got it for you. Woodville all over Hardin, 49 to nothing in the third quarter. Um, Crosby is all over P Port Nature's Groves, 49 to 14 at halftime. Barbers Hill leading Nederland, 38 to 14. West Orange Star beating Liberty currently at halftime, 38 to nothing. The Orangeville Bobcats edging out Bridge City, four, uh, 23 to 14 in the third quarter. Look at uh, Hampshire Finette and Silsby, 22-21. Hampshire Finette at the half. Uh, Little Cypress Mauriceville up on Lumberton, 19 to 17. Old Deweyville's up on Evadale, 8 to 6. So, pretty good scoring from around the area as uh, we are getting set here to start the third quarter of play. want to thank Chambers County Abstract Company for sponsoring the, uh, the halftime show. Trent, what did you see in the first half for the Panthers? Well, the Panthers have pretty much dominated the first half. I mean, you see the score of 39 to nothing, shutting, them, shutting the Cougars out so far. Um, the Panther offense has done a really good job of moving the football. The dual-headed monster, Christian Sanchez, having one of the best offensive games that we've seen out of him all season long. Um, you know, the special teams. I mean, the special teams have really showed up here tonight. I mean, the, right off the bat with uh, Landon Corbett receiving the, the football and taking it to the house, uh, you know, 12 seconds into the first quarter. Um, there, uh, there, there's, go ahead. There's an argument to say this has been the most well-rounded 
half that the Panthers have played all year long. I would agree. I mean, the, I mean, defensively, offensively, and even on special teams, like I was just saying, I mean, it's, uh, the Panthers have seemed to put, uh, you know, two weeks ago f- behind them. Uh, they came out tonight, uh, you know, on a mission, and they have taken care of business so far. they just got to keep that intensity going into the second half and not let the Cougars uh, try to get back on them uh, and change the momentum uh, going into the latter half of this football game. One big way to do that here is coming out on defense here in the second half. The Cougars are going to get the ball to begin the second half. If you can shut them down on this first drive, that might just take the rest of the wind out of their sails and uh, might be able to uh, really just grind down the clock and, uh, and get out of here with the wind. We just lost power. Are we still on? We're still on, ladies and gentlemen, but I believe I'm going to go to the live feed, and I'm going to see if I can't sniff out the culprit. Hopefully we've got enough power on my laptop to get us through the second half of play as both teams make their way back onto the field. So we are getting set here for the second half of action. Don't hurt yourself. Don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Sanchez is uh, going to get it set up here for the opening kick of the second half. So, the best, cheer, the best, best, best cheerleading coach around, Lauren Hillier, out here. Thank you. Doing the routines with her cheerleading squad. Number 19, really good. <laughs> Sanchez, with the ball set up, we do apologize. Uh, we have had some minor power issues, which is why the screen is currently black. So please, uh, please stay with us as I'll make sure to be providing the play-by-play as Trent tries to uh, troubleshoot what is going on. Uh, the kick is going to be in the end zone for a touchback as the Cougars will start their first possession of the second half at their own 25-yard line. So it's Graffinino out of the gun. Buno will be moving right to left. Too wide to the near side. And the first play of the second half does not even get underway because Buna has to call a timeout as the play clock was about to expire. So we'll uh, we'll stay here. Did Jordan just hit a bomb? Left tackle. Landon Stevens, number 65, and number 77, Tyler Welch. My uh, number 61, updates nine, have disappeared. Nonetheless, first down and 10 from the Cougar 25. Once more. Raffinino out of the gun, offset to his left by Johnson. Johnson's going to run it off right side. He has some room. Cuts back. 40, 45, 50. Stops, drops. Makes a move, 35, and just like that, the Cougars with a huge game to begin the second half. A 42-yard game for Johnson. 54 yards on the ground 
And just like that, into plus territory from the Panther 32-yard line is the Cougars. Out of the gun, too wide to the far side this time. Graffinino offset to his right by Johnson. Johnson's going to cut it back right side. He's going to pick up about five. We'll bring up second down and five. Corbett in on the tackle. So second and six from the 28. Graffinino out of the gun, looking right off the fingertips of his intended wide receiver, Kyler Stark, will bring up third down and six. As we had talked about earlier, could be huge for the Panthers to get a stop here and really take the wind out of the sails of the Cougars. Third down and six. 10.49 remaining in the third quarter. Too wide to the near side. Graffinino offset to his left by Johnson. Johnson fakes the handoff, throwing it to Kibido. Kibido with the catch is going to be right at the marker. That's going to be a first down. Pickup of six. Fourth catch for 46 yards for Colt Kibido. First down and 10 from the Panther 22. Handoff, Johnson, right side. Makes a move. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Cougars. Johnson from 23 yards out hits Painter. First, First touchdown, touchdown of the game for the Cougars. And the Cougars have struck quickly here in the second half. They are lining up to go for two. Same formation, two receivers to the near side. Handoff, Johnson, straight up the gut, is not going to get there. He's going to be stopped and dropped by Adam Galeas before he's able to convert. Nonetheless, with 10-16 remaining here in the third quarter, the Cougars have struck first in the second half as they now trail 30-6. Yeah, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Just got back from going down onto the sidelines here to figure out what our power issues here. We are on laptop power. And we are on the battery power for the camera. Had to switch batteries real quick. Uh, when they shut down the ticket booth down here, it cut off power up to our little press box area, as you may want to call it. Uh, so... We've got approximately <laughs> about an hour of battery life left on the laptop and the camera battery. So if it does, if the stream does drop, uh, we sincerely apologize about that. And we appreciate everybody sticking around through the power difficulties here in Buna. So Mars will be set up to kick. <laughs> Kickoff is going to come down to the 30. And he is not going to get any farther than the 30. So that is where the Panthers will set up shop here for the first possession of the second half.
Curiel under center. Two back, Sanchez and Corbett. As it's going to go, Sam, Corbett straight up Broadway. <clears throat> Absolutely unloads on a defender, breaking countless tackles to the 35-yard line. What an effort there by Landon Corbett. 35 yards rush on the rush for Corbett. Gives him 93 on 10 carries. 11th first down of the ball game for the Panthers quickly to the line of scrimmage. Curiel under center. Sanchez, the deep back pitch left Sanchez. Fighting his way forward. He's going to get a pickup of four. We'll bring up second down and six. That was the 11th carry for Sanchez for a buck 21. Again, ladies and gentlemen, awaiting to get power back up here on the visiting side. And like I said before, we've got about an hour as Curiel unloads it. And it's it is caught. caught. What a play. Caught down to the five. 26-yard pass and catch. I'm going to try and – well, they're going to hurry up to the line. I was going to go to the replay on that. But heck of a catch first, to haul it in. First and goal from the five. Curio under center. Handoff. Sanchez, lone back, is going to push his way forward. They're going to give him the four. That will be a pickup of one. Second down and goal for the Panthers. Eight forty-four and counting here in the third quarter. Two backs. Corbett directly behind Curiel under center. Offset to his right by Sanchez. Sanchez inside carry is not going to get there. He's going to get another pickup of a yard. And that'll bring up third down and goal from the three. Number 27 on the Eight minutes and counting here in the third quarter. Panthers trying to answer back from the opening touchdown drive of the Cougars. Coming to the line of scrimmage, two wide receivers, Clark and Bailey. Lone setback is Sanchez. Curiel throwing too high for Corbett. Falls to the turf. Will bring up fourth down and goal. A question time. Are we going to see another field goal attempt from Sanchez? Or will Greg Neese attempt? Try to go for it here. It does look like they're going to keep the offense on the field. Nope, they are going to go with the kicking team. So they will be attempting the field goal. We'll see where Clark marks it. Should be around the 7, I'm sorry, rather the 10 or the 11. And they're going to mark it at the 11. 21-yard field goal. One second left on the play clock. Low snap. is Clark's going to fight out of it. Trying to throw it and could not get a, get it away. They had to hurry because the play clock was down to two. Didn't look like they had much time. And that will go as a turnover on downs. Two nothing, Astros leading the Red Sox. For those of you who like that type of stuff. Now we're getting close to the end of that ALCS game. End of the eighth inning. And since my power was cut, I can't see <laughs> the score stream. Appreciate everybody sticking with us. I'm trying to conserve battery up here as much as possible. So let's see here. 7.33 as Buna will take over on their own. God, I can't even see where they are. Three? 
Handoff, Johnson straight up Broadway. Seventy-eight yards rushing for Johnson, second down and four. Seven minutes and counting here in the third quarter. Anowak still leading Buna 30 to 6 on your Hillary Auto Insurance Agent scoreboard. Johnson fighting his way forward. He's going to pick up the first down. That's going to be about a pickup of five. Number two, Jacob Johnson again on the carry. Good hard run. Picks up enough for the first down. He was stopped by number two, Zion Clark in the pass. It's going to be first and ten for the Cougars. First down and 10 for the Cougars, 640 and counting here in the third quarter. Out of the gun, Graffinino handoff straight up to Johnson. Johnson's going to be met at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Is he? I can't see at this angle. Nope, he got back to the line of scrimmage, so second down and 10. No 16 carries, 83 yards for Johnson. Second down and 10. Graffinino out of the gun, too wide to the far side. Looking downfield, unloads it, has a man, is going to be caught at the 35 yard line. That's going to be a pickup of 15. Logan Moss's, Logan Moss's third reception for 47 yards. How was that 20? Uh, they were at the 20. That's more like 15. Yeah, I'm going with mine. Handoff. Johnson is going to get caught in the backfield. That's going to be a loss of five. Seventeen carries, seventy-eight yards for Johnson. As we'll take under five minutes remaining here in the third quarter. So second down and fifteen from the Cougar thirty. Cougar started this drive on their own three. Handoff, left side. And that's going to be a pickup of nine. New running back into the game as that handoff went to Rogowski. First carry of the game for Rogowski, third down. about third down and six. Oh, I misspoke earlier. It was the end of the sixth inning or <laughs> in that game. Graffinino under pressure, being chased, running to his right. He's going to keep it, and he's going to get the first down wow. and more across midfield. Got speed. Across the 40, tiptoeing down the line, and my, oh, my, he's going to take it to the house. Wow. <laughs> he turned on the speed. There was no catching him. 65-yard touchdown. From Graffinino. I'm going to tell you what, Alex. I mean, the Cougars have come out in this second half fired up. Flat. I'm sorry. I, uh, the Panthers have come out flat. The <laughs> Cougars have absolutely come out on fire. Two drives, two touchdowns, including a 97-yard drive here. Cougars once more going for two. Handoff, straight up the gut, fighting his way forward. Once again, they are not going to get in. The point after is no good. With 3.58 remaining here in the third quarter, the Cougars have struck again. They cut the deficit to 18, 30 to 12, as we'll be back after this on Anahuac Sports Live. 
Building a new home? Does your driveway need that long overdue facelift? Are you just looking to finally get your lot cleared and ready to build something great? Look no further and trust the locally owned and operated professionals at Title Services Incorporated. No need to hire multiple contractors. Title Services does all phases of residential and commercial land clearing, house pads, ponds, dirt and rock delivery, and demolition. Call for a free estimate, 409-267-1057, or visit them on Facebook at Title Services, Inc. Custom processing, professional guided hunts, high tanning, and gator merchandise. Porter's Processing and Alligator Farm offers a personal experience like no other. Locally owned and operated in Anahuac, Texas since 1987, Porter's has been Southeast Texas' premier choice for any hunting adventure need. Now offering full service processing of gator, deer, beef, hogs, and other wild game, make Porter's Processing this hunting season's one-stop shop. Visit them today at portersprocessing.com or call 409-267-8413. Sports Live is brought to you in part by Hillary Auto, insurance agent with Texas Farm Bureau, Porter's Wild Game Processing and Alligator Farm, Title Services Incorporated, Anahuac National Bank, member FDIC, Chambers County Abstract Company, Third Coast Integrated Martial Arts, Turn to specialty companies. Onside kick by the Cougars gets recovered by the Panthers at their own 49. So it's eight plays, three minutes and 35 seconds off the clock. A 65-yard Graffinino rush. The two-point conversion was no good. But your new score is Anahuac 30, Buda 12 on your Hillary Auto Insurance Agent scoreboard. From midfield, about a, about a pickup of one. Corbett on the rush. Eleven rushes, ninety-four yards for Landon Corbett. Second down and nine from the Cougar forty-nine. Again, ladies and gentlemen, we are on battery power both on the camera and the laptop. So if we go out, we've got about probably forty minutes left. Pitch, Sanchez. Trying to find some room, pushing his way forward. He's going to get to the 47. That's going to be a pickup of two. It's going to be a pickup of two after the forward progress. We'll bring up third down and seven. Well, I'll tell you what, the Anaheim Panthers have better find the fire that they had in the first half if they want to stay ahead in this ball game because the Buna Cougars have, are not out yet. Two forty and counting here in the third quarter. Third down and seven. Three, still a three-score game, but two scores have already hit pay dirt for the Cougars. Curiel rolling out, looking back left. Has Corbett is going to be an incomplete pass, and that will bring up fourth down. Well, that's going to bring on the punting unit for the Panthers. Second punt of the evening for the Panthers. Sanchez will be back at his own 42. High snap, Sanchez gets it down and still gets the kick under as it's going to be a fantastic punt trying to stop it into the end zone. It goes, though. Touchback for the Cougars. And now the Cougars, with all of our friend Mo on their side as the momentum has completely shifted to the Cougars here in the second half with 2.07. 
remaining here in the third quarter. Normal formation for the Cougars, two wide, two to the near side. Graffinino out of the gun, handoff jo Johnson. Johnson is going to be met at the line of scrimmage by Bailey and pushed back. No gain. Second down and ten. We'll tick under a minute and a half remaining here in the third quarter. Graffinino out of the gun, offset to his left by Johnson, too wide to the near side. Sets back, looking downfield, under pressure, rolling right, flag down, is going to throw it away. We'll wait to see what the call is. I imagine it's going to be holding. Greg Nisa, send them back. That'll be second down and 20. Looks like we have a hold here against the Cougars. Second down and 20 from the Buna 10-yard line. Looking downfield, under pressure, scrambling for his life. Throws it to absolutely no one. There it and there's is. the flag for <laughs> intentional grounding. So that's going to be half the distance to the goal. That's going to bring up third down and 25 from their own five. Ay, ay, ay. Beginning to wonder if they were even going to throw that. Took them a minute. And I got coaches on the sideline signaling a possible safety, but. They're waving the flag off. The only thing I can think of is that they're telling head coach Greg Neese that he was out of the pocket and then threw it past the line of scrimmage. Right. That's, that's the only thing I can think of because there he was, was rolling not a right. blue jersey on that side of the field. No, there wasn't, but he was rolling right. I believe he might have been out of the pocket. So the flag is waved off. Nonetheless, third down and 20. And we need uh, Kendall Graveman to uh, get a double play. <laughs> Runners on the corners with one out. Minute 14 remaining here in the third quarter. Third down and 20. They're going to go two wide, one to each side. Graffinino out of the gun, offset to his left by Johnson. False start. It was after the timeout. Timeout Cougars, their second of the second half. We'll take it with them back after this on Anawak Sports Live. Since 1948, Wilcox Drugstore has been the Anawak area's most experienced and trusted pharmacy. Continuing its long-lasting reputation for personal attention to all your medical needs, Wilcox Drugstore offers counsel, refills, transfers, compounding, flu shots, and delivery. Visit pharmacist Dave Wilcox and his experienced staff today at 1208 Miller Street in Anawak or call 409-267-6141. Wilcox Drugstore, delivering solutions, delivering confidence. You've heard about shopping local, how about banking local? Since 1976, Anawak National Bank is the only locally owned and operated bank in Chambers County. We know you see Anawak National Bank folks out in the community supporting our schools, veterans, and nonprofits. Why not bank where you live? These experienced banking professionals understand local businesses and the housing market. Visit online today at anbank.net. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Go. 
Minute 14 remaining here in the third quarter. Third down and long from the Cougars from their own 10. Sends Johnson in motion. Looking downfield, staring his receiver down. Under pressure, it's going to be sacked in the end zone. Safety. Safety. Got that replay. Just trying to see who was in on the safety. I do, and let's take a look. Chambers County abstract replay. And looking to see who got in on the safety play. I want to say it was 32, Quandre Coates. And Coach. it was, I believe, the freshman. Great play there by Coates to get in his, the backfield. His second or third time that we've said his name tonight, the second time he's come up with a turnover, had a fumble recovery in the first half. Now he gets a safety in the second half. Heck of a game here for Quandre Coates. Thirty-two to twelve. So ALCS one out, top of the seventh. Houston leading two to nothing, but runners at the corners. That is now full count to Shaw. So the kickoff after the safety. Graveman on the mound. Takes a step off to check his runners. The safety kick is a punt. High kick is going to be fielded at the 44. Corbett had called for a fair catch. So wow. Crump Got him swinging, and the throw down to two gets the runner out and gets the Astros out of the inning. Strike him out, throw him out as Machete strikes again. Sorry, not to take attention off of the, <laughs> the football game here. But what a throw what to get him out. What a throw. Wow. 107 remaining here in the third quarter. The Panthers take over at the Cougars' 44-yard line. Too wide to the far side. Anowak moving left to right. Sanchez straight up Broadway. Fighting his way forward is going to get down to the 40. Fight his way forward to the 39. That's going to be a hard-earned four yards for Christian Sanchez. One twenty-nine on fifteen carries for Christian tonight. His helmet came off, so he's going to have to take a, the next playoff. Second down and six. If this is a running play, I would imagine this would be the last play of. The uh, first quarter. No, I'm sorry, third quarter. I'm glad it ain't the first quarter. <laughs> oh, that smell. Corbett is going to be corralled in the backfield. He's going to lose some. He's going to lose a yard. And that is going to take us to the fourth and final quarter of play with the Anahuac Panthers still leading the Buna Cougars 32 to 12. We invite you to stay tuned for the fourth and final quarter. We'll be back after this on Anawak Sports Live.
Fourth quarter, pitch right, Sanchez across the 30. Or down to the 30. Is going to be a pickup of 13 and a first down. They're going to give him the 29, so a pickup of 14. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we are on battery power up here on the visiting side at Cougar Stadium. Camera and the laptop, we got about 30 minutes of battery power left, so if it cuts out, we do apologize. This one's going to go. Straight up the gut. Pick up a two, we'll bring up second down and eight. Ninety-five yards on 13 carries for Landon Corbett. Now the Panthers are going to be wasting as much time as possible on every play. Probably look for the snap to come around four or five seconds each play on the play clock. Curiel, handoff, Corbett, met at the line of scrimmage and driven back. They're actually going to give him one on forward progress. Well, kudos to the Cougar defense. They've been able to contain Landon Corbett pretty well tonight, Alex. Absolutely, just some chunk yardage that has hurt the Cougar defense, but all in all, a lot of one, two, and three yard gains for Landon tonight. Third down and seven. Ten, ten, and counting in the ball game as the Panthers try to drive to ice this game. Curiel under center. Rolling left, looking downfield, throws it up and has it absolutely rejected like it was Shaq. Incomplete pass not only stops the clock with 10 minutes remaining, but also brings up fourth down as the Panthers have not been able to get anything going on offense. And it looks like head coach Greg Neese is, is going to keep the offense on the field. Well, given the positioning in Cougar territory, I don't blame him here. At the Cougar 27, fourth down and seven. Got to try to keep his offense on the field to eat up as much clock as possible. Because the Cougars just don't seem to want to go away in this football game just yet. Timeout Panthers. We'll take it with them back after this on Anoak Sports Live. Hello, my name is Mark Poggles, and I'm the pastor at Community Christian Fellowship Church in Oak Island, Texas. I would like to personally invite you to join us for Bible study during the week and our church services on Sunday morning. We have a nursery for the little ones, and our church family will greet you with a smile on their face and a loving heart. Come and celebrate with us as we study God's Word and give Him all the praise and thanks He deserves. Hope to see you there. Take care and God bless. Go Panthers! Looking for just the right bank? For a real community bank, locally owned and operated since 1976, come to Anahuac National Bank. Offering services from your first checking account to mobile and online banking to business and home loans. This is Texas banking at its best. Find us online at anbank.net. Anahuac National Bank, Chambers County's only locally owned and independently operated bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Fourth down and seven for the Panthers. <laughs> Head coach Greg Neese didn't like what he saw. Timeout Panthers will we'll keep it here with uh, 10 minutes remaining in the ball game. We've got some recreational fire use on the other side of the uh, – Stadium, <laughs> pretty cool looking. But Trent, how this shouldn't be as pivotal of a down as it should in this ball game. No, it shouldn't. I mean, we're in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, 
but the, the Cougars have just really come out of this, you know, out of their locker room just on fire, and no pun intended with a fire going on on the opposite sideline. But, uh, you know, they've really come out and, you know, made the adjustments that they've needed to. Uh, you know, yeah, the score is 32-12, to 12, but, I mean, it is a big fourth down, and, you know, Coach Craig Neese is going to have to, you know, do whatever he can here to get the first down and keep his offense on the field uh, to keep this momentum that the Cougars has, you know, at bay. Again, fourth down and seven from the Cougar 28-yard line. Curiel drops back, has a man tipped and tipped again and incomplete. Turnover on downs for the Panthers. We'll bring up first down and 10 for the Cougars with 9.55 remaining in the ball game. Three possessions here in the second half for the offense and they've got nothing going. Two out of three for the Cougars as they've been able to put two touchdowns on the board. First down and 10 from the 27 of Buna. Handoff, Johnson, left side, has a blocker, is going to be caught from behind. Coming in on the tackle, Kai Till. And that could have been some big yardage if it wasn't for Till coming in and making the tackle. It was actually a loss of one. Second down and 11. Yeah, if it wasn't for Till, that would mean he would have got to the far sideline over there and turned it up. And there wasn't very many white jerseys to meet him. 77 yards on 19 carries for Johnson. Graffinino out of the gun. Looking left. Fires left. Has a man caught. That's going to be a pickup of seven. Third down and three. Graffinino out of the gun. Handoff Johnson coming around right side. Is going to get to the marker. We'll see where they mark it. It's close. Caden Hampton in on the tackle. They have it spotted at the 37. I mean, it is it, super close. It is. It's going to depend on the chain gang. Now, they're going to give him the first down. They're going to give him the three yards. Looks like he got enough to pick up a first, first down and 10 from the Cougar 37 yard line. <laughs> Graffinino. Looks left, has nothing. Under pressure, Till with the sack. Ty Till once again in the backfield making a huge play for the Panthers. Ty Till making his voice known here in the fourth quarter. Boy, that's a big loss. That's 12 yards on the loss. Second down and 22. Second down and 22 from <laughs> the 35 of the Cougars. Timeout Cougars. We're going to take it with them back after this on Anawak Sports Live. Looking for just the right bank? For a real community bank, locally owned and operated since 1976, come to Anahuac National Bank. Offering services from your first checking account to mobile and online banking to business and home loans. This is Texas banking at its best. Find us online at anbank.net. Anahuac National Bank, Chambers County's only locally owned and independently operated bank. Member FDIC, equal housing lender.
whatever it is you wrangle, whatever seeds you sow, no matter what you nurture or what you choose to grow, at Texas Farm Bureau Insurance, we're proud to protect all Texans. Alex Outram, Trent Hart, Blake Ferguson here from Cougar Stadium in Buna, Texas. Seven and a half remaining as quarterback keeper is going to go for, looks like nine. Nine for Graffanino. Six carries, 89 yards, including a 65-yard touchdown for Graffanino. It's going to be about third and 15 for the Cougars. I don't think it's third and 13. Well, Again, ladies and gentlemen, about 20 minutes left of battery power. If we cut out, we do apologize. Graffanino lofts it left side in coverage. Falls incomplete. Fourth down. Oh, and there goes a flag. Not sure who it's on yet. And we're going to have a well, – I thought we were going to have an official timeout, but we'll keep it here. Yeah, that was kind of weird. Waiting to see what that call was, and I'm thinking it's going against the Panthers. Stanek in for the eighth inning. Presley's getting loose for the ninth. Score remains two to nothing. These timeouts and referee conferences are not helping our battery life. It's definitely not doing that. And if you're just joining us, I know that we've had quite a few viewers jump up here in the last couple of minutes. We lost power up here on the visiting side of what you would call a press box. And uh, we are on camera and laptop power only. So around 20 minutes, we're going to – we got 6.44 remaining in the ball game. But, uh, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate everybody sticking around. And if we do cut out, we lose power, we apologize for that. Be looking for all of the top plays on our TikTok channel. If you haven't done so yet, head over to TikTok and follow us over there. And all of our social media, whether it be Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. They did wave the flag off. So it is fourth down and 15 here with 6.44 remaining in the ball game. And them taking their time is just <laughs> keeps on wearing our battery life away as the Buna head coach is not happy. So fourth down and 14, Buna set to kick it off. They do punch it away. No one back for the Panthers. It's going to take a pretty good Cougar roll, and that is going to go out of bounds at the 27-yard line, about the 26-and-a-half-yard line. I still got top of the eighth, one out uh, for the ALCS. It smells just getting worse. <laughs> Good. Uh, 634 <laughs> remaining here in the ballgame. Anahuac will take over on their own 27. Uh, hopefully the, the Panthers can chew up some clock here. Gary under center. He's looking inside handoff Corbett. Corbett fighting his way forward. We're going to have holding on the Panthers. I thought I saw a little bit of grab of the face mask. Is it going to be holding?
And it is against the Panthers. That holding penalty will make it first down and 20 for the Panthers. Penalty will also put them back at the car, uh, Cougar 17. And it looks like as we get <laughs> winded closer on my battery life, ladies and gentlemen, it's gonna it's gonna cut off. We're gonna stay here until it does. Under center pitch right, Sanchez trying to fight his way forward, hurdles a defender, fighting his way is going to get hopefully stayed in bounds. They are still winding the clock. So that is a pickup of eight. We'll bring up second down and 12. Ladies and gentlemen, in an attempt to save some battery life, I'm going to cut the some of the software off here, including our uh, scoreboard. So we'll keep you updated on the scoreboards via audio. I'm going to cut down everything except for our streaming software. As we've got about... 20 minutes left. Handoff, Corbett, left side, across the 25, 30, 35, breaks a tackle, steps out of bounds at the 40-yard line. A late flag. We're going to see who that's against and if it was during the play or after the play because both could have huge ramifications here with 509 remaining in the ball game if we do go down ladies and gentlemen I might try to get my phone up five minutes left so hit over to Facebook if we do go down I'm going to go ahead and try to get set up for that, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so it, it, it looks like what they were explaining. Let's see. It was an illegal block in the back, and it was during the play, so... The first down does not count. And we will we will replay second down. Second down and seven. Handoff. Sanchez right side is going to be met at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he's going to lose. He's going to lose the yard. Eighteen carries, hundred and fifty yards for Christian tonight. Third down and nine. It's gonna be third and seven or eight for the Panthers. Timeout Panthers. We're going to keep it here as we are trying to go live here on Facebook. We do apologize about the technical difficulties. It is pretty much out of our hands. Again, if you just joined us, we did lose power up here. And we've not been able to get anybody to help us with power. So we've been on battery here for the second half.
24-18 remaining in the ball game. 32 to 12 is your score on your Hillary Auto Insurance Agency scoreboard. Third down and eight. Curiel under center, two wide to the far side. Sanchez Salone back. Fakes the pitch. Goes over to Clark. Clark trying to sprint to get there. He's going to come up two yards short. Well, obviously stayed in bounds as the clock continues to run. So, again, we're I'm set up to go live on Facebook in the event. Strikeout or pop out to end the eighth inning. And the Astros are now three outs away from going to their third World Series in five years. So punting unit coming on for the Panthers. Five seconds on the play clock. Oh. And there are too many men on the field. That's going to move the Panthers back some more. And this is well, they actually called a timeout, I think, before. I don't think they had any more timeouts. Or no, they didn't. He, he signaled timeout. I don't know why. Maybe to stop the clock. So five-yard penalty for too many men on the field. Illegal or illegal substitution, if you will. <laughs> High snap. Sanchez comes down with it. Gets the punt off. Hits at the 46. Takes a Panther roll. Taken at the 37. Back across midfield. So the Cougars will set up shop here with pretty good territory. As they're going to mark them right at midfield. So with 3.03 remaining, it does look like Anahuac is going to get out of here with the win. But this is not the second half that head coach Greg Neese would have wanted for his ball.